What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in the next few weeks, I'm going to be starting a new series about extensions that are really helpful for architectural applications inside of SketchUp. So these are going to be extensions that are really good for doing architectural things like drawing houses or other things like that. Some of them will have different applications than others, but all of them are going to be helpful. Um, in addition, I have also created a new resource so if you want to get the whole list of architectural extensions now, you can download that by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash architectural extensions to get the whole list if you don't feel like waiting a few weeks for me to talk about all of them. But in this week's video, we're going to talk about an extension that contains a full suite of tools for working with the architectural applications inside of SketchUp. Um, so this week's architectural extension is 1001 bit tools. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so 1001 bit tools can be downloaded from the SketchUp extension warehouse. So if you go to the SketchUp extension warehouse, you can download that from there. One thing I will want, I do want to caution you about just a little bit is this extension has not been marked as compatible with SketchUp 2019. The last time it was marked as compatible was SketchUp 2015. However, if you download this and run this, um, I've had no problems working with this. Um, there is a little bit of a use at your own risk type thing going on here, but I haven't had any issues with this. And when you download this, SketchUp will just give you a little a little message saying um, this hasn't been marked as compatible with your version of SketchUp. And if you click continue, then you can go ahead and install that and it seems to be working fine. So the other thing is on 1001bit.com, there's also a pro version of this extension. I have no idea if it's been kept up with based on some of the dates that I'm seeing on here, maybe not, but you can download that one and that one does contain some additional tools as well. Um, but this version that we're talking about right now is the free version. So all the tools I talk about in here are going to be free. And so what I really like about this tool set is it contains a number of different tools um, that you can do a ton of different things with. So you can see how if you look at this menu bar, when you install this, this has a bunch of different tools in here. And it can be a little bit intimidating, but I'm going to show you a little trick so that you can uh, find the tools that you're looking for no problem. So one of the things about this extension is that you can customize this toolbar by going up to extensions, 1001 bit tools, and manage toolbars. Well, when you do this, you're going to get a menu that looks like this, and you can check a box in here to arrange all of these in one toolbar, or you can set this to give you multiple different toolbars for each toolbar group. I usually leave these in one toolbar, but you'll notice what this does is this gives you a list of what each one of these um, buttons does. So you can kind of go through this list and figure out which tool you want. Um, and First of all, you can check or uncheck boxes in order to add or remove things from this toolbar. You can also see what each one of these does, meaning that you can find a tool really quickly. And I'm going to talk through some of my favorites. I'm not going to go through every single tool on this list. If there's something on this list that you're interested in that I don't cover, just let me know and uh, I can talk about that a little bit more in depth. But I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we're going to take a look at some of my favorites in here. So one of the one of the very simple things that this extension has that I really like is it has kind of an expanded divide edges tool. So if you go up here and you look at this button right here, um, you can see how this says it divides and places construction points. And every one of these tools, when you open it up, is going to pop up a little menu like this where you can select different things. Um, but in this case, um, you can either use this to divide divide lines into segments. Um, which isn't really any different than anything that's already in SketchUp, but there's also this option down below, which I really like, which you can set a fixed distance for your segment. And the nice thing about this is you can divide um, your lines into different segments by setting a length. So like for example, I could divide this line into 18 inches. And you can tell this to either do that from the middle point of your line or from a start point. And so if you do that and you click on this, and then click on divide edge, you can see how this is going to divide that up into your number of segments. But if I was to undo that and pick a different 
fixed different distance. So let's say I pick something kind of weird like seven inches or something like that and I click divide edges. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna divide this into seven inch segments. And you can see how the last one, it just doesn't place a control point right here. So what that means is you could divide this up into like framing lengths or other things like that based solely on length. So the next tool I wanna talk about is the extend edges tool. And so this is a tool that you'll find in a lot of like CAD applications, but it can also be helpful in SketchUp, especially if you have a bunch of edges that don't go all the way to the line. So the way extend edges works, and you can find that one, you can find extend edges by clicking on this button right here. And the way that works is that one, you can uh, click on it and then it tells you to select an edge and then it tells you to select a target edge. And so you can see how what this does is this will give you a little guideline right here showing you that if you run this and this is your target edge, it'll extend this edge all the way to this point right here. So you can use this to quickly extend edges to lines if you have gaps or something like that without having to come in there with a line tool and do all that manually. So there's another tool in here called offset edges. So what I like about offset edges right here is offset edges will allow you to offset a single edge, which is something SketchUp won't allow you to do. So like for example, if I was to select this and try to run the offset tool, you see how it tells me that I have to select a single face or two or more edges? So the built-in tool, it'll allow you to offset multiple edges like this, but it won't let you offset a single edge. And a lot of the time you wanna do that, you wanna offset an edge by a certain length. So let's say like four inches. I can type in a value, hit okay, I can move my mouse to set if this is gonna offset edges along the, the red axis, the blue axis. Um, so you can see how by moving my mouse, I can set which direction this will offset. So that's really nice if you need to offset a single edge um, because that's something SketchUp will not do by itself. And so now I wanna talk a little more about the architectural applications for this tool. And so there's a number of different tools in here that are really helpful for architectural applications. So they allow you to draw different things inside of your model. So like for example, you can see how as I mouse over these, this will tell me what each one of them do. Well, in this case, I'm gonna click on this first one, which is called build vertical walls. What that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to set my walls um, based on a thickness and a height and then build that wall as a group. So like for example, let's say I had a six inch wall that was gonna be 10 feet high. I could just type in those values and I could click build wall. And I find it to be helpful to come in here and actually sketch out your lines that this is gonna run along first. So like for example, I've come in here and I've created the shape that I wanna run this wall along and notice that that was outside of this edge, which I didn't necessarily want, but you can adjust the alignment of where that wall is going to be placed. So if I select um, wall align alignment left and then click build wall, what that's gonna do is that's gonna build this wall along the path and it's gonna offset that to the left instead of to the right. So that allows me to draw all of this within this footprint that I've already laid out. You can see how as I do this, it automatically goes around corners and then once I get to the end and click, it's automatically going to fill this in. So you can see how that allows me to really quickly create a number of different walls in here. And it'll also bring these in as a group, which is really nice because you don't have to worry about push pulling or geometry merging or anything like that. And then from there, there's multiple different tools in here that are really helpful um, for architectural type applications. Like for example, let's say we want to add a front door. Well, there's a tool in here specifically designed to create openings in vertical walls. And what this will do is this will allow me to set the width and the height of the opening that I create. So I would type in a width of three feet and a height of seven feet and click create opening. And then you can see how this is gonna give me kind of a preview and it's gonna ask me to pick a reference point. And then it'll ask me to select my point that I'm gonna place my door on, so right here. And then it's gonna ask for a vertical height, which in this case is gonna be the ground. And then you can see how when I click in here, that creates a door opening. So that's really helpful. Um, you can also use this to do windows. So let's say I had a four foot by four foot window, I would just do the same thing. 
where I would just be able to set my window opening wherever I want it to be. One thing that might be a little bit helpful before you do that is you might want to come in here and set a guideline at the bottom of your window. So let's say you wanted your window to be four feet off the ground, you might want to set a guide with the tape measure tool before you do that. But you can see how I could, once I get this figured out, I can add these in here really quickly um, without having to go in there and do a whole bunch of like drawing and push pulling and things like that. And then from there, there's multiple different tools in here for creating door frames and window frames. So if I come in here and draw across this face, if I draw a face right here, and then I click on the button for create door frame, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to set my depth. So in this case, that would be six inches. And then you can set other things too, like your frame widths and things like that. And then you also set if you want this frame to go on the front, the middle, or the back based on where your face is. So in this case, we want this to be on the front. And then you just click on create door frame. And actually, I should have selected the back. But you can see how that comes in here and that creates a frame really quickly. And then there's another tool in here that does the exact same thing for my window. So I would set this to six inches. And there's a couple different off options for if you want this to have like a beveled edge or something like that. But then you just click create window frame. So you can see how that's really easy to do. And there's also a tool in here designed to actually create a more complex window. So if I was to draw another face in here, there's an option in here for divide selected face into panels. So if you do that, that's going to create more of a complete window in here instead of just a frame around the edges. You can set the number of rows that are in here. You can set the depth of your window. You can set how wide your frame pieces are going to be. And these usually kind of default in here kind of thick. So I'm going to bring these back to like one inch. And then I'm just going to click on create window frame. You can see how that'll create this whole window inside of this face that I had selected. So this is a really easy way to add those in. Then the nice thing about this is these all get added in here as group faces. And I'm gonna go ahead and reverse them. But it's really easy to go inside this group, click on this face, and then add a glass material to make it transparent so it looks like an actual window. So you can see how this suite of tools can be really helpful for architectural modeling. And then the other thing I'm going to do really quick is just demonstrate the uh, roof function. So I'm going to make a copy of this face so that I have a face on the roof. There's an option in here to automatically create a hip roof from a face, meaning it'll come in here and it'll create a roof based on this face right here. So all I have to do is select it and then click on this last option and just tell it what I want my pitch to be and what I want my overhang to be. So I could adjust that to like 24 inches, click on create hip roof, and that'll actually come in here and that'll create a roof. And for some reason, it looks like it didn't fully and for some reason it didn't fully fill this in, but it's really easy to come in here and fix this. So you can see how, I'll just trace over this face right here. You can see how this created this complex roof really easily without me having to mess around with the follow me tool or anything like that. So you can see how this is really easy to use to add these architectural features in here. The last feature I wanna to touch on for just a second is the feature that allows you to uh, add different stairs in here. So there's options in here for building um, like single flight staircases or multiple flight staircases that's really easy to use. You can adjust the widths and your depths of your treads and the numbers of risers. All of those things are adjustable in here. Then all you have to do is just draw where you want that stair to go and then click in order to create that stair really quickly. And the nice thing is it creates these handrails in here as edges, which you can then use to extrude a complex handrail along. And the last feature that I wanna talk about is the spiral staircase. So there's a function in here that'll actually create a spiral staircase in here that'll create both the staircase as well as the rails. But all you do is you just come in here and you just set the different properties of this stair, like number of risers, riser height, things like that. And then just click on build staircase and you just pick a center point and that'll come in here and create your uh, spiral staircase. I will note this one seems to take longer than the others. I think it's just because it's creating a 
whole bunch of uh, complex geometry. One thing I would recommend when you do this is do not have the outliner open. If you have the outliner open, you can see how this comes in here and it creates a whole bunch of groups. And for some reason, this just kind of seems to sit there and spin for a lot longer if you have the outliner open. So if you're gonna use the spiral staircase function, I would say just make sure that um, just make sure that you have that outliner minimized before you do that. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. How do you feel about 1001 bit tools? Have you used it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you're looking for more great architectural extensions, make sure to check out that architectural extensions guide at the sketchupessentials.com slash architectural extensions. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.